Coming up on Ag Week TV, we'll visit a unique multi-generational seed potato company. The USDA unveils its plan to finance close to $3 billion of climate smart ag projects. Ag labor reform is being called for in an ag industry worker shortage. And our Ag Week corn and soybean crop tour continues. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Emily Beal. Farmers across the U.S. are getting nearly $3 billion for climate smart agriculture projects. The USDA says the program is so popular, the White House tripled the funding for it. U.S. Ag Secretary Tom Vilsack traveled to the Midwest to promote the program. It is responding to a tremendous demand for more help. We listen to farmers. U.S. Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack visited Anibis Family Farm in Wisconsin to talk about the White House's plan for climate smart ag programs. $2.8 billion will go to funding 70 new projects. The private sector has pledged an additional $1.4 billion for the projects. The program is aimed at lowering climate harming emissions from the farming and forestry industries. There's a growing market demand for sustainably produced food products, uh, not just here in the United States, but around the world. Uh, the reality is that the export market, which is incredibly important to American agriculture, is more and more demanding uh, to know uh, what sustainable practices are in place in terms of what they purchase. And we at USDA want to be a partner. There's a lot of interest in this program. Phil Sack says USDA received more than 1,000 applications from farmers and ag businesses, requesting more than $20 billion in funding. One of them is the country's largest dairy co-op, Organic Valley, which has more than 1,700 farmers in 34 states. It got $25 million for its carbon insetting program, which is designed to help small farms implement climate smart agriculture practices. We've always been champions of regenerative farming. We've always been climate champions. And we hope that programs like this continue to propel us in those areas where uh, not only our membership succeeds, but also too where hopefully consumers can see us for who we are and all the good work we do and what we represent from the good food we produce to how we produce it. And it really is about making sure that you are in a position to be able to uh, provide the next generation of, uh, of farmers the opportunity to do what you love to do. Other USDA Climate Smart Ag grants include $80 million to help beef and bison producers be more sustainable, led by South Dakota State. $95 million to help crop farmers reduce carbon emissions, led by Iowa Soybean Association. And $30 million for the Renewable Jet Fuel Program in Laverne, Minnesota and Lake Preston, South Dakota. The agency will announce a second round of funding later this year for additional climate-related projects. A Red River Valley business has grown from an experimental concept in the 1980s into a multi-generational potato seed company today. Nickel Pates has more on Valley tissue culture in this week's Ag Week cover story. Sandy Arstead and her husband Randy launched Valley tissue culture in 1984. The Halstead, Minnesota company produces elite, disease-free seed for seed potato growers. This is the mother plant and these are the children, if you want to call it that. They raise seed potatoes in test tubes in the lab and then grow them out in greenhouses. The first year we had one greenhouse, the next year we put up another one, and then we put up another one that next year. Then we ripped them all down and put four up, and then we got, it just kind of snowballed. Eventually, Randy focused more on the family's farming and banking enterprises, while Sandy became the primary seed potato grower. Today they have 13 greenhouses, and they're pioneers in disease-free in vitro seed production. There's tiny little holes in the top here. Valley Tissue sells seed potatoes to 40 customers in several states and Canada. This one's a newer one that we've gotten the last couple of years. Sandy says when they started, they were one of the few in the country doing it, especially for diverse growers in fry, chip, and table stock industries. What we did was commercialize something the university does in a lab setting for the farmers to make it practical. Right there, there's some right there. The Arstead's daughter, Alex Bear, works in the company and has become a partner in it with her brother, Charles. The company is capable of filling orders in 125 varieties. She says it's labor-intensive, exacting, and interesting work. 
in the last several years, we've gotten some of these really, um, I would like to call them funky potatoes. And they're usually like oblong shaped potatoes and um, have like the purple inside and outside or, you know, spots. And they're, they're really fun to plant and harvest. Valley Tissue Culture relies on English speaking workers from the country of South Africa. El Marie Horn says it's rewarding work and great opportunity for women to do ag work, which is often dominated by men. You know, you do a full cycle of like starting to like with the plants and then planting them, growing them, harvesting them, grading them. It's, I like that. The Arsteds say producing disease free seed potatoes is a responsibility that they take very seriously. I'm holding their farm in my hands, and hopefully I don't screw up. I know my spots. <laughs> At Halstead, Minnesota, this is Michael Pates for Ag Week. You can read more in the next Ag Week magazine or at agweek.com. After last year's cattle sell-offs because of the drought, things seem to be returning back to normal in the cattle markets this year. But feedlot operators are affected by high corn prices and some by limitations on feedstuffs. Market watchers expect corn prices will be a key driver in how cattlemen adjust marketing this fall. Rick Walhoff is the longtime owner and manager of Glacial Lakes Livestock in Watertown, South Dakota. He says if corn prices could come down to about $5, cattle feeders might be a bit more aggressive. The big thing was maybe the price of this corn. Uh, you maybe had a lot of guys having to feed $8 corn, and that throws a little monkey wrench into the the break-evens of fat cattle. Steve Massett's family feeds cattle and farms at Redfield, South Dakota. The Massets have a relatively small cow herd in a confined animal feeding operation feedlot that holds about 2,000 head. They buy cattle on a case-by-case -case basis, a combination of quality, price of the animals, and availability of feedstuffs. We look at where they break even, and is there a profit in it? And we look for what we can buy this livestock risk insurance for, and if there's some money in it, We'll do it. Massett says he's also a big user of the Livestock Risk Protection Insurance Program to help keep things in the black. Like so many businesses, the ag industry is short of workers. Supporters of ag labor reform are again calling on the Senate to take up the House's Farm Workforce Modernization Act. Industry members are urging passage due to the growing food crisis and increasing food prices. The act aims to solve worker shortages by creating a secure, reliable ag labor program. It also removes opportunities to work illegally in the U.S. and strengthens border security. It also strengthens the seasonal farm worker visa program, giving some foreign-born workers a path to citizenship. If we can help figure out a way to do that and support that, we would, we would be behind that. Along with the fact that we just need to open the numbers. We're restricted on the numbers that we can let in. We're looking for legal workers that can support our industry. A wide coalition of ag groups has been looking for a solution to the ag labor crisis for the past decade. Coming up on Ag Week TV, we continue our corn and soybean tour with a check on crops in the Red River Valley. Hi, Bill Kelsey here, Gehringhoff Territory Manager, covering northern Minnesota and the Dakotas. At Gehringhoff, we offer a full line of the best harvest headers and residue management system on the market. Contact me today to discuss your farm's needs. From there, I'll connect you with an authorized Gehringhoff dealer. You can get the field results you want in varying conditions with the flexibility of the summer's VRT Renegade. Featuring on-the-fly blade angle adjustment from 0 to 19 degrees. And if you want the simplicity of a Super Coulter with the ability to move a little dirt, you'll love the all-new Summers Super Coulter Samurai. Go to SummersMFG.com or visit your local dealer to learn more about North America's broadest line of tillage equipment and other products from North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing. I'm Peter Bosch. I've been working with Gateway Building Systems for a little over 20 years now. I chose Gateway Building Systems to build my shop because I wanted a building that could both be used for my equipment and as a place for my family to hang out and do things. I would advise anybody that's thinking about working with Gateway to go in and talk to the guys there. Tell them your plans and your future dreams and let them design something for you. 
small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has the storage, conditioning, and handling equipment to fit any size operation. With a wide variety of options and accessories, including our patented Blockbuster Auger to help break up blockages over the center sump gate, and a full line of mixed flow grain dryers. With even heating, excellent efficiency, and expandable capacities, protect your investment and market your grain. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with Superior Grain Equipment. All right, here's the free gift I got for opening up a checking account. Let's see what I got. Okay, guys, so I got this portable DVD player. Yeah, I'm not sure why my bag would give me a tiny waffle maker. So it's a tumbler, but it doesn't fit in any of my cup holders. I wasn't even sure they still made these. Is it for kids? Is this for kids? Don't fall for the free gift. Find a bank that cares about what you really need. Cornerstone Bank. Thank you to our sponsors, Crary and Full Pod 2022, Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, North Dakota Soybean Council, North Dakota Corn Council, Minnesota Soybean, and Gehringhoff. It's turned out to be a good growing season for corn, and many farmers are getting ready to harvest in a few weeks. Our Ag Week Corn and Soybean Tour takes us to East Central North Dakota. We have corn that's changing color, and it's the middle of September. I think looking at the spring we had, that was something we never would have expected. Like most crops around the region, corn got off to a late start because of the cool, wet spring. For many, planting was about two weeks late, going in the middle of May here. But the good summer growing conditions helped it catch up. We hit a hot and dry snap. So that really accumulated gr growing degree days, but also helped to um, really push our plants to get them kind of more on track. So right now, I think all things considered, um, the corn crop is looking better than we could have expected. And the weather didn't only cooperate for growing. And again, that's where we got really lucky. Um, diseases like it cool and wet, and our prime disease times is when we were hot and dry. As far as pests goes, not really. And that's, again, another pleasant surprise considering the spring we had. Murphy says yields and test weights are looking pretty good right now. If it stays hot and dry, we'll continue to accumulate those growing degree days. So our harvest could be, honestly, I think within the next two weeks. It's farming. It's anybody's game. And right now it's totally up in the air. I'm outside of Castleton, North Dakota on Ag Week's corn and soybean crops tour. And today I'm with Justice Kefoffer. So Justice, how is the soybean crop looking in this area? You know, locally, we are set up for a pretty good crop. I think there's a lot of optimism out in the countryside with farmers, and I'm excited to see what we can accomplish this fall. So what are some of the obstacles you've had to overcome in terms of pests or possible diseases? Yeah, you know, early we started off with a late planting date, and fortunately we collected a lot of GDUs throughout the year. Um, but early on, we had grasshoppers that we were spraying for, uh, which affected our soybean crop, and guys uh, treated those as appropriate. Next, we had a lot of iron deficiency chlorosis due to nutrient tie-up. And what would you say would be the expected harvest date for this region? You know, it varies based on planting date and variety. There's fields that should be off in the next seven to 10 days locally. And then there's gonna be fields that are, are green like this one we're out in front of that are gonna be closer to 16 to 20 days. So um, it's a wide range. So we had a very hot summer. Do you think those extra growing degree days were important for this crop this year? Absolutely. We had the heat, but we also had the moisture. And two things that make beans flower well and produce, you know, soybeans, we're gonna, we need the heat, we need the moisture. I think we're, uh, we're set up well um, based off GDUs. You know, we're 200 GDUs ahead of normal, um, which is affecting all of our crops in a positive way based off our late start. So in terms of yield, what would be your estimate for this area? You know, locally, typically guys are um, happy with 45 to 55 bushel beans. Um, we set the stage up well. Now that we're moving into harvest, uh, I think we're gonna hit some yield goals uh, locally. I think, uh, we have the potential of a crop where guys could hit some, some record yields in some fields. And then there's fields that are, have our issues with diseases that um, you know, are gonna inhibit that a little bit. But overall, I think we're on par for a average to above average year. Justice Kefoffer, thank you so much for joining us today on Ag Week's Corn and Soybean Crop Tour. Ahead on Ag Week TV, a Fargo lab is doing genetic testing to help you better control Palmer Amaranth. Every season has an end. After spending your whole life building something, 
can be hard to move on to your next stage in life. But when that time comes, you deserve to have someone you trust guide you through the process. And by trusting us to pass on your legacy, it gives someone else the chance to create their own. Every auction has a story. Let us share yours. Mice are a real problem and get into everything. They leave a scent trail, bringing more mice to the party. Poisons and traps just lure mice in, leaving you with the mess and costly damage. Introducing Mouse Mix, the world's safest and most effective deterrent. The pleasant scent interferes with the mouse's sense of smell. Simply put, they can't stand it. Mouse Mix works six months for complete winter storage of campers, cabins, boats, cars, and farm equipment. Mouse Mix, you put it out and the mice leave. Farming is more than just work. It's your way of life. Protecting your family's legacy is our way of life. Through challenges and successes, we understand your family's insurance needs. With every turn of the wheel, for every investment, through every season, generation after generation, Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. Dynaflow is the ultimate high volume water management pump. Whether you're experiencing flooding, emptying sloughs, transferring ponds, or working on irrigation, the Dynaflow pump works in as little as 18 inches of water and is designed to move 3,000 gallons per minute. The Dynaflow lift pump is the perfect upgrade to your drain tile system. Using line shaft turbine pump technology, these pumps are made to last while operating efficiently. Dynaflow drain tile pumps can move up to 1,500 gallons per minute, up to 3,400 feet away. For Ag Week, this is Mikkel Pates at Watertown, South Dakota. We'll look at the positive impacts that dairy can have on the community. A Minnesota couple has put a grain bin to a new use. Spoiler alert, it's not grain. This elaborate system of tubing with the downhill slope is how Maplewood State Park gathers sap to make syrup. Thanks for watching Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Are these mild temperatures here to stay? Here's John with our AgriWeather Outlook. As this fall season marches on here through the Northern Plains, Upper Midwest, Southern Canada, several things are coming to pass that make it quite uh, notable for this autumn in particular. It's relatively warm. We're seeing pretty consistently warmer than average temperatures, and that has impacts in other ways as well. Areas that have been dry dry up a little more because of uh, lingering evaporation rates even as the sun gets lower. Now, there is going to be this particular week, late this week into the weekend, potential for a tropical storm hurricane, possibly of uh, large proportions or at least powerful, to impact the United States starting somewhere in the Gulf or Florida and then moving up the eastern seaboard during the course of this upcoming weekend into next week. And that will have the potential to produce some very heavy rainfall in some parts of the eastern United States. And I can't, from this vantage point, predict the track of that storm just yet. But I can predict that likely elsewhere, it will end up being a fairly dry week. So here's the setup. Jet stream coming out of the northwest for the time being, curving down around a trough that has temporarily brought some fairly cool weather into the Great Lakes region. Hot weather has really been dropping down south, and that will likely sort of subside a little bit as that hurricane system builds up through the Caribbean and into the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, it's likely to spread some rainfall into uh, some area of the Gulf Coast, which will keep the heat away. It'll still be fairly hot back in Texas with a lot of 90s and as the week goes along that's going to be tried to that's going to be pulled northward again because you'll notice as we go through this week the primary jet stream will be retreating into an almost summer like pattern which will allow warm temperatures across the country this is also a scenario that will encourage that tropical system or that hurricane to move northward and bring excessive rainfall wherever its track is, whether that be along the eastern seaboard or up through the eastern part of the Midwest. And again, I cannot determine that at this juncture. As we hit the weekend into next week, we're still going to see the jet stream pretty far north, although I do expect to see a redevelopment of the general low pressure circulation in the northeastern states, which will set up northwest flow, which should eventually cool things off a bit. And 
there's some evidence that as we get on into uh, the end of the first week of October, we'll get a split flow. That just means a weak jet stream, which means not a lot of rainfall. Speaking of, generally speaking, it's going to be pretty dry this week, except wherever this tropical system tracks in the southeast. There will be some rain in eastern Canada, and that's about it. Pretty much dry weather through the northern plains and the southern plains. The second week, wherever that storm tracks, there could be some excessive rainfall. It still looks almost bone dry in the Great Plains this week. Maybe some showers around the western end of the Great Lakes and the Pacific Northwest will finally see some rain getting down at least into Northern California. Risk management is not just for the grains. Livestock producers, did you know you too can protect the price for your production? Livestock Risk Protection, or LRP for short, is a great tool to help you protect the price of your calves. Cattle producers can also protect their pasture and hayland from lack of rainfall with Pasture Rangeland Forage, or PRF insurance. This is a very affordable way to help producers in times of below average rainfall. Call the Risk Management Specialist, Martinson Ag Risk Management. Growing up on a farm made me who I am today. I have such respect for farmers that create meaningful lives for their families. It's one of the hardest jobs out there and managing finances during up and down cycles can be very tricky. And I'm really excited to help farm families with their planning matters today, as well as to help them dream about maintaining and growing their own legacy. You can get the field results you want in varying conditions with the flexibility of the Summers VRT Renegade. Featuring on-the-fly blade angle adjustment from 0 to 19 degrees. And if you want the simplicity of a Super Coulter with the ability to move a little dirt, you'll love the all-new Summers Super Coulter Samurai. Go to SummersMFG.com or visit your local dealer to learn more about North America's broadest line of tillage equipment and other products from North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing. We at The Mosaic Company hang our hat on the fact that we are crop nutrition leaders. That's why we have produced products like Micro Essentials, Aspire, Sestera, which help that plant utilize certain key nutrients differently than what just straight commodity products do. And we want to increase that yield, but we also want to increase the ROI. Because ultimately our goal is to help the farmer have a better yield, a better ROI, and do it in a sustainable way. Why I ultimately choose them is they handled everything from the site prep, the dirt work, the gravel. The electricians were all excellent and they're very knowledgeable in the dryer setups themselves. They made sure that they designed me a system that was expandable years into the future. It was a long-term encompassing project and that's what I appreciate about their knowledge. I'm Ethan Hansen from Blanchard, North Dakota and I would definitely recommend Advanced Grain for all your grain storage handling needs. A sophisticated genotyping laboratory in Fargo is becoming more popular for fast confirmation of Palmer amaranth weed infestation. It recently set up to confirm Palmer amaranth weeds by testing seeds or leaves. Now it's able to test for resistance to either glyphosate or group 14 herbicides. So not only can we identify the species of pigweed, we are now starting to look at uh, certain traits within these pigweed species, herbicide resistant markers. NDSU extension weed specialist well. Joe Eichley predicts group 14 verification will become important to agronomists to and growers. As we rely heavily on, on that chemistry, being able to quickly test for resistance, I think will be very important over the next uh, coming years. Bateson says if you have a weed you suspect is Palmer amaranth, you can send it to the lab for testing. The cost starts at $75 and takes 5 to 10 days to get the results. Volunteer corn is causing some problems this year and it can lead to other pest problems down the road. Stray corn is showing up in soybean and other fields. It seems to be worse this year because of big windstorms last summer caused a lot of lodged corn. Much of it remained on the ground and germinated this summer. Bruce Potter with the University of Minnesota Extension says that corn can bring insects and disease, especially corn rootworm. Some guys did a real good job of cleaning that up with herbicides this year, uh, and some did not do such a good job. And though, and the fields that had volunteer corn out there late in the season are the ones we're worried about. He says when looking ahead to next year's corn, growers may need to spray twice. Still ahead, how farmers can benefit from the growing market for renewable fuels.
why I ultimately choose them is they handled everything from the site prep, the dirt work, the gravel. The electricians were all excellent and they're very knowledgeable in the dryer setups themselves. They made sure that they designed me a system that was expandable years into the future. It was a long-term encompassing project and that's what I appreciate about their knowledge. I'm Ethan Hansen from Blanchard, North Dakota and I would definitely recommend Advanced Grain for all your grain storage handling needs. Every season has an end. After spending your whole life building something, it can be hard to move on to your next stage in life. But when that time comes, you deserve to have someone you trust guide you through the process. And by trusting us to pass on your legacy, it gives someone else the chance to create their own. Every auction has a story. Let us share yours. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has the storage, conditioning, and handling equipment to fit any size operation with a wide variety of options and accessories, including our patented Blockbuster Auger to help break up blockages over the center sump gate and a full line of mixed flow grain dryers with even heating, excellent efficiency, and expandable capacities. Protect your investment and market your grain. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with Superior Grain Equipment. The team at North Star Egg is committed to quality and committed to you. We're not just a full service dealer, we're farmers too, so we know you need the best machinery and services that'll keep you going all season long. We have the largest equipment inventory in the upper Midwest with a well-equipped parts and service department. So whether you need machinery tomorrow or parts today, stop in and experience what North Star Egg can offer on our website at northstar-egg.com or give us a call at 701-361-4790. Don't miss out on the equipment you'll need next season. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer, has early order discounts on its full line of powerful, efficient, new Case IH equipment, including tractors, combines, and self-propelled sprayers. Get a great deal and ensure that you have the latest in productivity and technology. Supply chains are tight. Contact your Titan Machinery dealership today and find out how much you can save by ordering ahead. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH equipment experts. Renewable fuels will offer many opportunities in agriculture. Bioenergy economist David Ripplinger spoke recently at the Next Five Years Ag Conference. He says although the corn ethanol market may be pressured somewhat, as electric vehicles become more popular, he says there are other opportunities, like sustainable aviation fuel. He says California's low carbon fuel standard is being copied in other states and even other countries, and that could be a big opportunity for farmers. I would actually not say big, I'd say many. A uh, lot of different opportunities. Renewable natural gas is probably the single biggest immediate opportunity with renewable diesel. Uh, you know, both of those have the opportunity to quickly bring a lot of biofuel, in this case, uh, diesel or natural gas into the market uh, and capture some very significant premiums. Ripplinger says, although energy prices are high in the U.S., they are much higher in Europe creating a competitive advantage for American farmers. Stories you'll only see on agweek.com and in Agweek magazine this week. Small grain harvest continues to lag normal pace in northern North Dakota. And Summit Carbon Solutions has filed for permits in two Minnesota counties. We appreciate you watching Agweek TV. Remember to check us out daily on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok to keep up on all your ag news. Have a great week.